Hi everyone and welcome to another Continuous Time Signals and Systems video. Today's topic is the Continuous Time Fourier Transform Multiplication Property. This video was made for the ECE 220 course at George Mason University during the crazy spring 2020 semester. If you want more information about Mason or the department or me, you can check out these websites. In the meanwhile, let's get started on our video. The multiplication property of the continuous time Fourier transform says that if we multiply two signals, say s of t and p of t, to get a third signal called r of t, um, then in the Fourier transform domain, uh, we convolve their two Fourier transforms. So r of j omega is equal to s of j omega convolved with p of j omega. Now, when we do convolution in the frequency domain, we have this 1 over 2 pi factor out front that we have to keep track of. That's just a scaling factor. Now note that this property here, the multiplication property, is actually the dual of the convolution property. The convolution property says if I convolve h of t and x of t in the time domain to get y of t, uh, then the Fourier transform y of j omega is just the multiplication of of h of j omega and x of j omega. So what this basically says, you can conclude from these two properties, is that convolution in one domain is multiplication in the other domain. So that's something important to keep in mind. Now in the remainder of this video we're going to see two examples of this property. Okay, in this first example we're going to start with a signal s of t, which is sine of 2t over pi t. So this is a sync function in the time domain. Its Fourier transform, we know from our previous work, is a box, right? So s of j omega is this box right here. And we could um, take the inverse transform of this and verify that this is correct. But now we're going to define a new signal, m of t, that is equal to s of t multiplied by itself, or s squared of t. So m of t is just sine squared of 2t over pi t quantity squared. So now we want to find the Fourier transform of this signal m of t. So we want to find m of j omega. So let's see how we do that. We know from the multiplication property that we just talked about that m of j omega should be 1 over 2 pi s of j omega convolved with s of j omega. So that's 1 over 2 pi. Now we have to convolve this box. Oops. We have to convolve this box with itself. So we're going to, I'm just writing it out here. Well, we know that the convolution of a square pulse with an identical square pulse is going to equal a triangle. So we can go ahead and draw that triangle. 1 over 2 pi times a triangle here. And now we just have to, let me draw this a little bit better. Now we just have to figure out what the bounds on the triangle are and the max height. So we can um, go ahead. We know, right, from our previous work and extensive work with convolution, um, that the starting point of the convolution, the starting point of the triangle, is the addition of the two starting points. So that's minus 2 plus minus 2. That would be minus 4. And the ending point, the ending point would be the sum of the two ending points. So that'll be 2 plus 2, which is 4. And we know um, that um, these are identical boxes um, and we multiply them together. When we multiply them together it's just the same box you get because this is a, um, a height of 1 here. So if I multiply when these two are perfectly aligned uh, in the convolution process I just have a box that looks like this and so the integral the area under that box is equal to the height there um, so the area under that is 4, so that's going to be 4 here. Um, 
And so that's what we're left with. So we could go ahead and do the scaling by 1 over 2 pi. Um, and we get that we have a triangle whose peak is at 0. The height is 2 over pi. And the edges are at plus and minus 4. Okay, so this was a simple application of the multiplication theorem, the multiplication property. We multiply in time, we convolve in the frequency domain. Um, so if we started off with a square pulse in frequency um, and we're convolving with itself, we end up with a triangle. Um, and we can easily figure out the starting and the ending points of the triangle and the max height. So that's our first example. Okay, so now let's consider a second example of the multiplication property. We're going to start again with our signal s of t, which is the sync function and the corresponding box in frequency. And now we're going to consider another signal, p of t, which is e to the j omega 0 t. All right, so that's just an, a complex exponential that lasts forever in time, from minus infinity to plus infinity. And now we want to find what the Fourier transform r of j omega is when the signal r of t is defined as s of t times p of t. Okay, so um, we clearly know from our experience here r of j omega is going to be 1 over 2 pi s of j omega convolved with p of j omega. So it's going to be this box here convolved with whatever the Fourier transform of p of t is. Well, this is a complex exponential. We know um, from our previous work that that complex exponential has a Fourier transform that's just a single delta function at omega 0. So here's our delta function at omega 0. And that delta function has an area of 2 pi. Okay? We know that from our work with Fourier series, using the Fourier series to get the Fourier transform uh, of a, a periodic signal. Um, we could also just take the inverse transform of this and verify that we get that. Okay, so now what we've got to do is we've got to convolve this with this. Um, so let me just sketch that out. So it'll be 1 over 2 pi. Now we're going to have our box here, which is s of j omega, convolved with an impulse. The impulse has area 2 pi, and the impulse is located at omega 0. Okay, we have a lot of experience up to this point in the semester convolving with impulses, right? So we know that the convolution of a box with an impulse just puts the bo a copy of the box at the location of the impulse. And because the impulse has area 2 pi, the box will be scaled by 2 pi. So we can sketch that out. So it'll be 1 over 2 pi. Now we put the box at the location of the impulse. So the box will be centered at omega 0 and it'll go to omega 0 plus 2 to the right and omega 0 minus 2 to the left. And um, because this has an area of 2 pi, the box height will change from 1 to 2 pi, right? And so now, because whenever we do frequency domain convolution, we typically have this 1 over 2 pi out front, the 1 over 2 pi here will cancel that 2 pi there. And so I will just be left with a box centered on omega 0. And then the edges are omega 0 minus 2 and omega 0 plus 2. Let's see if I can make my omega 0 a little clearer here. That's omega 0 in the center there. And the height of the box will be 1. So this is what r of j omega is equal to. Okay, so what, what has happened here? We multiplied by a complex exponential in the time domain, right? We multiplied by this complex exponential in the time domain, and what that did was shift our frequency response so that it's now, instead of being centered at zero here, it's centered around that 
um, the frequency of the exponential. And so this is an example of a modulation system. It shifts things around in frequency, and it's used very often, uh, or systems like this are used very often in communications. If they've allocated you a particular bandwidth that you can broadcast in, um, you can multiply by a complex exponential to shift the signal you have up to the bandwidth that you're allowed to use. So that's one of the practical applications of the multiplication property. So let's just go back and review here. The key thing we covered in this video was this multiplication property. If we multiply in time, we convolve in the frequency domain. It's a very valuable property, and it gets used in a lot of areas of signals and systems. So um, that concludes our video. I hope it's been helpful to you. And again, if you want more information about ECE220 or um, the department, you can check out these websites. Thanks for listening.